IADO actual service. In today's video I'll be showing you how to make a hood just like this one. So first up this is something that quite a lot of you guys have asked me for a video on this hood. This hood is pretty much exactly the same as the standard Viking hood pattern that you see quite often in costuming and in historical reenactment. The only difference about it is this front panel on here is not square, it is a slightly squashed square. I don't know what the name for that is. But the reason I've done that is simply because if you have a shallower angle than 90 degrees between those two lines, so that it actually matches your shoulder angle, it just sits better. And the only other change I make to it is I have a little straight line here instead of it going to a point because then it just seems to work slightly different. Now I'll show you the pattern in the video and I'll show you how to design it to fit you and hopefully I'll be able to explain it well enough for people to actually follow. I'm not going to give you a pattern because the pattern would be a different size and shape for every different person who makes it for it to fit them. So the best thing I think I can do is explain how to make your own pattern. Hopefully you can see that. I was just going to scan this in and put it up on the screen, but then I realised it would actually be easier if I can point to certain things on it. Some of you will already know this, but this is the standard Viking hood pattern, which is the pattern that I didn't use for my hood. This is your absolute basic Viking hood pattern and the reason that it's used is because it's simple and it doesn't waste much fabric because the pieces are all completely square and they fit together neatly. So if you were cutting this out you would put that square next to that square and then that directly underneath it and you haven't wasted any fabric. So the way that this works is you've essentially got two squares, one is for the front and one is for the back and then you have got your strip which goes along your shoulder over your head and then along your other shoulder and that's how it fits together so i hope my drawings make sense um, i've just drawn it with the front piece and the back piece and the side piece squared to it so you can see the assembly really that line should line up with that line but i drew it in a hurry I didn't draw the back closed on the drawing simply because that is harder to draw but that would be sewn to that. I don't like this pattern for two reasons. The first reason is that the 45 degree angle because it comes from a square on the shoulders is too steep for actual human shoulders so the fabric always ends up kind of bunched up around your neck and then stretched out unevenly and it just doesn't sit as well and then also because these come back to a point that's touching each other so it sort of scrunches up underneath your chin and it's just annoying i could show you how to make this hood but there are thousands of youtube videos about how to make this hood and the video that you all want to see is how to make my version of this hood that is my version of this hood what changes have i made well the bottom point of the front and back piece is still 90 degrees the top angle it's kind of kite shaped is much shallower and that is matched to the shoulder angle of the wearer so that means that it sits correctly when it's on the back piece goes to a point at the top which is sharp where the two pieces of fabric for the shoulders join together and the front piece has a little gap in it which means that the fabric isn't all bunched up underneath your chin and it just seems to work more nicely. So it's assembled in exactly the same way. That piece sews to that piece and then that piece sews to that piece and then that's just looped over your head and stitched at the back. Again I haven't drawn it stitched at the back. So then when you do the front that actually makes the front of the hood slightly longer because it's not sewn across to the middle where that flat bit is and that actually makes the hood slightly tapered so it drops down towards the back which makes it sort of fit more nicely but the bottom angle is still a 90 degree so it still looks like the viking hood how to make this pattern to fit you firstly you've got to decide how far down your shoulders the hood comes hang on a minute So 
So that is a very, very, very rough sketch of a person, but it will do. Now, when you are making the hood, the first thing you have to decide is where the hood mantle ends. I prefer a hood mantle which kind of ends right here on the ends of your shoulder so that it overlaps where a waistcoat would sit, which would kind of be like there by a tiny little bit so that it essentially comes away your arms start to drop down but some people prefer them much bigger so that they sort of hang loose over your shoulders a bit and come down lower like that and some people prefer them smaller now I like the size of kind of like this and the reason that I like that size is because it doesn't restrict movement when you lift your arms up it doesn't lift the hood mantle up and then leave it sort of ruckled up on your shoulder but it's also big enough to come down far enough down your front to be heavy enough not to move about too much and there's plenty of room to pin it any smaller than that I don't think it works very well and any bigger than that it can get in the way but it also gives you better protection from the weather so it's trade-off once you have determined that you essentially can take a dressmaking tape measure that's flexible tape measure you can pin it to your clothing on your shoulder just here and you can move it across to kind of where your neck is you can pin it there as well and then you can run it straight up over the top of your head kind of loose however loose you want the hood to be if you want a really loose hood then you just leave loads of extra room in it and if you want quite a close fitting hood you only leave a few inches but make sure you can look up without lifting the mantle off your shoulders so then then when you've got your correct length pin it to your shoulder on the other side and then pin it here and then the length of that tape measure after it's done that route to there where the x is is the length of that piece of rectangle there so the next thing is how deep do you want the hood so if you want to be able to pull the hood up right over your face so that it shades your face and no one can see who you are you're going to want your width of the rectangle so from here to here or here to here to be really long and if you want it to be quite close so that it ends just after your eyes sort of just above your forehead where mine does so that it doesn't obstruct your vision too much then you make it shorter but word of warning the hole in the hood is governed by the width of that multiplied by two plus the length of your little cross section here as a complete circle so if you just find that position on a tape measure or a flexible rule and wrap it round this is obviously not big enough but i've lost my tape measure if that doesn't fit over your head you won't be able to wear the hood so just a quick thing for you to check while you're making it essentially the minimum is where double that wraps into a circle only just fits over your head otherwise you'll make something and you won't be able to wear it i did that so now you know how to get the length of the rectangle and the length of the shoulders because the length of the shoulder is from there to there so that is the length of this dimension here off of your pattern the 90 degree will determine the length of the bottom sides of your shape so you sort of roughly draw that out on a big piece of card to be 90 degrees which is the edge of a piece of paper or something so essentially the only thing left to do is shoulder angle you want that to be right to you everybody's shoulder angle is slightly different but it doesn't need to be that right because of course fabric is bendy it just needs to be kind of a roundabout there so i'll show you what i do what i do is i get a item of clothing that fits me so here is a shirt that fits me make sure it's something that fits you quite nicely that you're happy with the fit of and you literally just lay it out flat on a piece of cardboard or something and you take a pen and you draw the shoulder angle on like that and then when you've done that you take it away you get your ruler and you extend those lines like that to a point and then you have your angle don't do it on the desk do it on a piece of paper or you won't be able to make it into your pattern but i haven't got a piece of paper um 
so then now you've got that you literally just start there you measure to the edge by that distance which is that distance that you've already measured you mark that out on your thing and then you do the same on the other side then you extend it down to 90 degrees so yeah that's my piece that's my other piece with the top cut off as you can see they're basically both the same size so what you can essentially do is you can make your first one then you can draw around it and cut the top off and that gives you your flat at the front so that's pretty much all you need to know if you design your own pattern so that it's how you want it you might want a sharper angle or a less sharp angle underneath but you should be able to get something that works from that now in order to make it you essentially just need to measure out your rectangle on the fabric there's no point in making a pattern for that because you can just measure it out now i would add about an inch on each side for hem allowance and same with these so when you draw around that on your fabric draw around it on your fabric there and then cut it out somewhere out here so that you've got room to do your seams because your seams are going to have to be on those lines let's get to making it now that I've made my pattern it's time to cut the fabric but before I go any further with that I'll just um, explain this one thing to you I am making my hood reversible in the same way that I made this surcoat reversible so one side is blue and one side is brown there are a few advantages and disadvantages to doing this now the obvious one is you get versatility of it being reversible but in terms of actual sewing and construction there are things to consider before you decide to do this now the first is obviously you need twice as much fabric so if you're doing it reversible which i will be doing but i'll show you how to do it not reversible for those of you who don't want to um you actually have to make your thing twice so you're using twice as much stuff the advantage of doing it is when it comes to seams and hems and stuff because you sew it inside out and then you turn it the right way round that is actually stitched along the edge with the sewing machine and you can't see the machine stitching and it also means that you don't have to hem the edge because the act of turning it inside out just gives you that nice sealed look on the edge so it's essentially the same as making a lined garment and in terms of historical accuracy of course it's a heck of a lot easier to hide machine stitching so if you're not going to do all of the hand sewing detail this would still work as an item of clothing without borders so that's that now i have cut my pattern pieces which essentially i've just drawn around the pieces of paper that you saw before on the fabric so i've got one great big long rectangle and I have got two diamonds, one with the top cut off for the front and back. Because I'm doing this to be reversible, I don't have to worry about this. But like on the end where I haven't got much room, if you were doing this not being reversible, that's your shoulder. So you would want at least, say, this much room after your line when you cut it out. So that's like an inch to an inch and a half. The reason for that is you need enough room to turn it over twice and have it finish at your line otherwise you won't be able to hem it and stop it from fraying. Same with these because that's your bottom edge you would need that to be long so you can turn it over twice. Now the other thing to consider is like on these where that is going to be sewn to that you would then need to have a long edge on the inside because you would need to seal it. So this one isn't reversible and then on the inside you don't want that to fray so that is sealed so you've got essentially you've turned it over on the inside to stop it from fraying now you can use bias binding to do that but that's just an extra thing to buy so i don't do that the actual front edge of the hood so that's this edge if you're going to do a fancy border like this you don't need to worry about it but if you're not that front edge actually needs to be hemmed now it's a lot easier to hem that when the fabric is straight and not sewn into a hood yet than it is when it's not so what I would actually do if you're making this as a single layer is start at the end so that's your front piece and that's the shoulder so from that distance from there to there that's where your front of the hood seam starts so you would mark there and then do the same on the other end and then the distance from that line to the next line along you would hem 
like that and just sort of finish it off like that on the machine before you start sewing and then it's done and you can do it when the fabric's nice and flat because mine is going to be reversible I guess I just have to make two hoods there isn't really a specific order to this providing you've done your front hem first if you're not doing reversible then what I would just do is pin it from that corner to there sew that seam and then probably do the other side because once it's sort of bunched up and all the fabrics in the same place it's going to be annoying The other thing I forgot to mention is if you are making clothing out of upholstery fabric the, the washing instructions that come with your fabric is to dry clean only. Then if it's linen or cotton or polyester you can clearly put all of those in the washing machine because they are made into ordinary clothing. The reason they say dry clean only is because the fabrics aren't pre-washed which means when you first wash them they'll shrink. So my advice is upholstery fabric is better value, cheaper, very often thicker and more hard wearing and it actually comes on a wider bolt. It will shrink when you first wash it especially if you are making something out of two different types of fabric because they'll shrink differently so that will basically ruin your garment as well as making it too small. So I pre-wash the fabric on a hot wash and that way it, so long as I always wash it at 30 degrees if it's pre-washed at 60 then it will never shrink. Now that first seam is sewn between the front piece and the side of the hood, the next seam to do is the back piece and the side of the hood. Just a little word of warning here, because this piece hasn't got the flat bit on the top it's a lot harder to tell the difference between the top and the bottom because the only way to tell the difference between the top and the bottom is you've got your 90 degree at the bottom and your shallow angle at the top. and it is very easy to accidentally get this mixed up and to sew this bit to the hood instead of that bit. Check and double check what you're doing before you start sewing this because getting it wrong and having to unpick it is quite annoying. Just a quick note. I hope that my trying to show you how to make a single layer hood whilst making a reversible hood thing doesn't make the video too complicated but I didn't want to make a single layer hood just for the sake of making a video because fabrics are expensive. I've now got both pieces sewn to the over the top part of the hood and what I've then got to do is sew the other half from there to there to the other end of the over the top part of the hood. So then it is a question of meeting up the line from, from the point at the end of this. So this is the complete piece of fabric folded over with that and then going up to the middle and then just sewing that on both sides. I've now sewn both of the diamond shapes onto the big rectangle, front and back. So the only thing that isn't done is I haven't seamed the back. That's the back one, the one where they meet up to the point. And then that's the front one where there's that little gap that we put in the pattern. The next step is to close the back of the hood. So that is sewing it from the point straight down to the end of here. If you're making a hood and you want it to look vikingy so it has a point on the top or possibly like a druid hood or something like that then you leave it rectangle like I'm doing whereas if you wanted it to look more kind of fantasy ranger like you'd want a rounded top on the top of the hood so what you'd essentially do then is instead of sewing to the point just sew a curve like that and then it'll fit over your head and it won't have the little point on top so you can vary the shape as you want it. So now I've done that, I'll turn it the right way round for you, just for demonstration purposes. So for all intents and purposes, this is now a hood. It isn't very well finished off or anything like that but all of the constructional stitches are finished so up until this point 
the construction is the same for if you're making it reversible or not and if you are only making a hood for a costume or a cosplay or something that you're going to wear on one occasion you can literally leave it here and it will still work but obviously if you want to use it for prolonged use and you want it not to fray or anything then you'll have to finish off the stitching somehow now don't forget if you were making a single layer hood that edge from there all the way round and back again would already be hemmed it's also worth mentioning that the hem on the little front edge on the flat on the top of the diamond shape that makes up the front you can hem that as well before you start assembling the pieces for ease it's like too late to tell you sorry so what else do you need to do if you are making a single layered hood to make this a finished item well you would then need to hem around the bottom edge so if you look at the bottom edge if you were intending to do this you would have left a longer amount of fabric after the line but you can actually just turn that up and you can carry that on round past your seams all the way to the point and you can just do a simple hem all the way around and that will finish it off nicely when you are doing the inside edge if you've got one of those fancy sewing machines that does that zigzag stitch that seals the edges of fabric then great but I don't so what I would then do is just turn it over like that double and sew it there so that it doesn't unravel on the inside but what I'm going to do because I'm making a reversible hood is I'm going to make another one of these exactly the same at this point out of the blue there's no point in me showing you how to do that 